Hey guys, Bridge here. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, some uh, tips and advice in order to bring your UI design for mobile apps to the next level. Now, we're going to leverage uh, an amazing resource, which is, of course, uh, the human interface guidelines from Apple. Now, that being said, uh, these principles I feel are going to work uh, and are applicable also for Android and just mobile design in general, since uh, aren't really like specifications of uh, um, just for iOS. But uh, I feel it's just something that you have to keep in mind and I would highly recommend you to check out this guide at the very end. I'm going to leave the link, it's available for free. So let's get started with the very first concept, which is uh, as they say here, formatting content. Now, they're giving it, us uh, this uh, example of uh, basically well-formatted content and then uh, not well-formatted content. Now, in this case, it's quite obvious. Uh, essentially, the difference uh, is that uh, you want to format content in a way that uh, is meaningful for the users. So you always have to think about uh, what is going to be the best way to structure the layout, what's going to make the information more visually digestible, if you wish, and uh, just making it easy. So this one, I think it's pretty straightforward. And uh, let's go on to the very next one, which is the task controls. So as you can see over here, uh, we have two examples of uh, a calendar picker. And uh, in the example on the right, uh, we can see how we're having one of those uh, small calendars. Uh, and uh, this applies not just for calendars UIs, but uh, for drop downs and multiple selections uh, as well. Uh, since uh, when you're dealing with mobile applications, especially, you have to consider that uh, the user is not going to have uh, a lot of space uh, to visualize the information. So don't be afraid of taking up uh, the entire width uh, of uh, the device, uh, especially when it comes uh, to elements such as you know pickers and things like that. This brings us to the next uh, topic, which is hit targets. Now, as you can see, we have two examples of uh, uh, icons uh, which are placed next to each other. One thing that you have absolutely have to keep in mind is that uh, the finger is going to occupy a specific space uh, and you want to make it easy and give it almost like a buffer, some padding uh, in between uh, the touch points uh, so that uh, the user is not going to maybe accidentally press uh, another icon or maybe like press two icons at the same time. So always keep uh, uh, the design uh, really uh, breathing, meaning that uh, you have to give it the right amount of space uh, in between. And this brings us to the very next point, which is the text size. Now, I remember when I first started out uh, as a junior designer many, many, many years ago, um, I used to have a tendency of making small text uh, simply because uh, I thought it looked uh, cooler and more minimal. But the reality is that you always have to put uh, accessibility and legibility before aesthetics, especially on mobile screens, uh, since uh, again, the screen uh, estate is limited. So you always want to um, give it the right text size. And a tip that I have in order to uh, really be sure that the text size that you selected uh, while using uh, and uh, designing on Figma, Sketch, or whatever software that you're using is correct uh, is uh, a very simple one. And that is to export uh, a JPEG image uh, onto your phone and actually look at in your phone because you're going to realize immediately if the text size is good or not. Because sometimes as you're working in the design software, maybe this the text size is looking good, but you don't really have a real idea about the ratio. So this is a quick tip and you can always use also app to sync maybe like an Envision project or Figma mirror, you know, all those apps. Uh, those code can work as well, but this, the principle remains the same, which is essentially bring your design into your mobile device. Now, another big one, which I see a lot of junior designers uh, um, not to focus on as much is the contrast. You want to give the right contrast. Of course, this is an exaggerated example, just to make a point. But uh, what uh, I notice more often than not uh, is um, junior designers uh, or designers in general that maybe uh, they're afraid of using like uh, blacks uh, and uh, maybe they go with uh, light grays uh, for body text uh, 
or you know sub headlines uh, and uh, <clears throat> sometimes they just don't make it and one of the things that, which is really important uh, is also consider your audience so if you're designing an app uh, for the elderly for example you want to really go hard on the contrast uh, um, because uh, maybe so, it, it's an audience uh, where um, they need uh, like more contrast so keep these things in mind as you're designing uh, your apps now another important one is uh, spacing and uh, uh, in this particular uh, case uh, they're dealing with uh, uh, the uh, line height so the line height as you can see if we have like this first example and the second example you can see how this one is more legible simply because it has more breathing room in between the lines so definitely another thing to keep in mind and it's not just for aesthetics but it's actually for legibility and the reason being is that the eyes we can uh, more easily scan in between if we have more line height. Of course, there's always a point of, this, of diminishing return, but uh, I would say in this example, they uh, nailed it. Now, another one which uh, I think it's a kind of, uh, um, it's, it's almost straightforward, uh, um, but really isn't in some cases and that is uh, the resolution you always want to make uh, things as high resolution as you can uh, considering uh, the possible constraints and limitations of uh, um, your of the project so one of, one of the things which uh, are um, w w which is useful to do is uh, for example if uh, this is the resolution that uh, or, or the size that uh, you're um, that you need to create the image uh, always export it at maybe like 2x or 3x uh, for retina displays and that means that the image is going to be bigger but then it's going to be almost like downscaled and uh, it's going to have a higher resolution so that is something which uh, you have to keep in mind uh, just uh, in general and the distortion this one i think it's uh, even more straightforward don't distort images images or good in the their original ratios 99.9% uh, .9 of the time so try to avoid distorting the images of course and uh, now let's talk about uh, uh, organization so create an easy to read layout that puts control close to the content they modify now as you can see in this case uh, we have uh, um, different uh, type of controls uh, up and down well here we just have one um, just generally speaking try to group uh, informations and the controls uh, and adjustments uh, in a way which makes uh, uh, sense uh, just overall so something to keep in mind now another one is alignment of course which is uh, you know you want to make a, you want to use alignment strategically so there should there should always be a reason and the underlying uh, pattern in all this is that uh, you always have to think about uh, and give uh, your design decisions a reason because otherwise it's just uh, playing with uh, aesthetics and it's almost like doing guard well design is a lot about function and uh, um, doing things with a purpose so as you can see here um, we have left aligned here we have a left aligned and the right aligned it's kind of like all over the place and uh, there isn't really a reason why you would ha want to have a right align and here a left line with no padding so this uh, the left line in generally speaking is the easiest way to consume uh, text especially larger uh, amounts of text um, there are some countries uh, like I think in, in Arabia where it's the other way, but in <laughs> pretty much like all the other countries, uh, it's like this. So you want to keep this uh, in mind. And this brings us to the very end. So I hope this video was useful. I want to remind you that I recently launched uh, a free course on uh, how to get started in UI UX design, where I'm basically sharing my 10 years of experience 
working in this field and uh, I'm also giving uh, away the source files uh, from the software tutorials that I have on my YouTube channel. I have over 500 videos and uh, you can find the source files for the Figma, Sketch, Adobe XD tutorials. So feel free to check it out if you're interested in that and I'll see you in the next video.